Hello everyone, it's Brian here, your host, and you're very welcome to episode one of the Work Well podcast. If you haven't already, check out our website, workwellpodcast.com, where you can access show notes for each episode and discover fantastic bonus content. Thanks to my partners, AJ Products and Irish Life Health for all their support. My guest on the show today is Dr. Sarah Jane Cullinan. So Sarah Jane is an assistant professor at the Trinity Business School with 10 years experience teaching and researching in the areas of HR, organizational behavior and well-being at work. She has a PhD in organizational behavior focusing on well-being and job design and a diploma in teaching mindfulness-based interventions. So Sarah Jane and I have collaborated together a few times in the past, and she's now a good friend. So originally we created a training program for aspiring well-being leaders to empower them to develop well-being programs at their workplaces. And most recently we co-designed the postgraduate certificate in workplace wellness at Tangent in Trinity College, Dublin. On this episode, Sarah Jane and I are discussing our new reality and how individuals and organizations can adapt to the current challenges they're facing. Hope you enjoy my conversation with Sarah Jane. Sarah Jane, hello and welcome to the Work Well podcast. Hi, Ryan. So, most important question that I'll ask you today How are you? <laughs> the dreaded question um i'm good i i am good today um every day is different today i am very good um we are settling well into it i think we're nearly three weeks at home now fully the, the three of us is three in my family my husband and my three-year-old daughter molly and um yeah so we're we're nearly three weeks at home and i think the first week was really hard because obviously there was massive uncertainty and there still is now but we've kind of nearly three weeks in now we've settled into a bit of a routine and um but we have good days and bad days and we're still trying to figure out that combination of both working from home and minding her and looking after ourselves and everything but but right now uh, today is a good day i have to say and we're trying to say that when there's a good day um within within the kind of bubble that we are in at the moment in yeah. our house um, but obviously engaging with the outside world has a, a much bigger um, impact on our, our feelings and emotions as well. So, but during the day, actually, we don't tend to engage with the news. Um, that's just a strategy we've taken on. So, so right now it's 10 past three. So I haven't touched the news today. So that's why probably part of why I'm feeling old <laughs> as well. Yeah. Brilliant. And so what does a typical day in this kind of new normal look like then? How are you managing? work family you know the three-year-old how's all that working out um it's fine like it's a real it's real trial and error um because we both have our jobs and um i'd say we've obviously no childcare like everybody else so we, we still haven't got it like where we'd say right this is the way we're going to do it for the next couple of months but we we're, we kind of review it every day so at the moment um my other half Benny works full-time and I work part-time so we kind of prioritize that his space is in the office so what we've tried to do is he's taking a day off a week and I come up and then do my bits and pieces but at the same time that's really not the nature of the way that work, work works either so I can't get everything I need to get done in a day either especially if it's a lot of cognitive tasks and you know even chats like this and um, meetings with students etc so I do need to kind of space it out throughout the week so um, we had a few days there where we were swapping over up and down the stairs um, every couple of hours and that just didn't work at all. That was really tough because um, I don't know, like whoever's listening, if they have a three-year-old, but three-year-olds, well, my three-year-old anyway, it doesn't work that well with transition. So if it's just transitioning from one part to another and then back and forth and back and forth, she wasn't really liking that. Um, and also you're obviously you're you're in work mode and you literally walk down the stairs so you have about five seconds before you're in parenting mode so and what's for lunch what's for dinner you know all those types of things so um we find we've been finding it easier to block it out a little bit so at least that somebody gets a day or 
a half day to themselves just to kind of have a bit of space up in the office we're lucky we're very lucky that we have a house that has an office and I'm really conscious that a lot of people don't even have that luxury or might be up on their bed or whatever it is like they don't even have the space for that so we've been doing that but and then trying to create some kind of routine where you build in that exercise during the day, you know, within your two kilometers and trying to get very creative with that within the garden and the local space. And again, we're very lucky that we have a nice little garden and, and a um, nice natural space near the house. But again, like, you know, in an ideal world, I would get out probably, you know, um, in the morning with my little one but she just wants to like get out of her pajamas first thing in the morning either so um, you know there's that kind of challenge as well so we're trying to then build in um, you know things for ourselves in the evening as well uh, but what we've actually found I think uh, the last three weeks is that we haven't been spending much time alone together like you think you'd have loads of time but when you put all your um, adult socializing you know whether it be via zoom or telephone catching up with parents or friends um, or doing your like exercise classes online that's all the evenings almost of the week gone so um, actually we thought we'd have nearly more time for each other but it's nearly less but that's fine we're still working that out and um, but routine is still um, evolving and coming into its own but definitely like what day is today? Tuesday. So this week we felt it's kind of bedded down a little bit more um, and we're, we're starting to enjoy it a bit more and enjoy that freedom and flexibility that we have because what we have here in our house is, is quite a luxury. Do you know, we're not on the front yeah. line. We have a bit of space and um, we have flexibility with work. So we're, we know we're very, very lucky. Yeah. Great. It's funny, isn't it? Uh, no matter what the scenario, but time just gets filled. You mentioned, yeah. uh, I mean, prioritizing exercise, mm. speaking to parents and family and friends. Then you think about maybe work commitments, mm. family commitments. Like it's still a lot of people, even if their their work hasn't changed dramatically, they're still quite busy. There's still a lot on. You still fill mm. those days. Oh, big time. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Because you have to as well be very strict with yourself as well you know in terms of routine because you, you know when you physically go into a building to do a class or to do it's even i find with the exercise as well like it's it's there's, there's a big difference between physically being in the presence of other people and having that accountability and doing things by yourself you just kind of tend to do you know it just it just works out differently that's why i think that having some form of routine and we were at the start we were very loose with the routine and kind of enjoying the staying in your pjs for half the day or maybe all day and all that kind of stuff and well there's been a lot of advice against that approach anyway but and it was nice for a week but <laughs> it just wasn't really it didn't do us so well anyway um and you do yeah you do fill the days um with all kinds of different things. That's why you have to, that's why like we've had to make a big effort as well to schedule um, nourishing activities, like things that, that are good for us, that make us feel good, you know, and that we enjoy. And have a bit of space by yourself, even if it's just in a different part of the house or in the toilet, whatever it is, <laughs> just to have a, a room that you're on your own in for a while, depending, like in some, I, I, I'm conscious as well that I'm saying this and, and you know some people are in the horrible situation where they're actually in a house on their own altogether oh, yeah. and then there's other people in houses that are full so there's kind of pros and cons to both of those scenarios but our house yeah there's three of us and a big part of it is trying to get a little bit of space to ourselves as well during the day whether that be for a walk or in a different bedroom or whatever it is yeah yeah and uh, so what does your working day look like now? And you're, you're working with Trinity College. Do you want to tell us a little bit about how, how, you, end, how you ended up there, a bit about your background, and then what your, what your working day looks like at the moment? Yeah, with well, oh God, I couldn't even describe what my working day looks like at the moment. There, there genuinely is not, like as I said, he's taking Wednesdays off. So t tomorrow and last Wednesday, I kind of just went hell for leather and we, we joked about it that he was I was on my day off and he was on his day off and even though he was off work and I was on but the office was like a little bit of a, a break but um but so there is no set day you know it's it's really funny because um with my work um 
you know, because I teach and now I'm offering mindfulness sessions for staff and students and stuff like that. And we're trying to schedule that. It, I, you need to be quite flexible. You know, you need to kind of, if people can only do evenings, you know, you need to be ready to do an evening. If people can only do mornings, you know, so it's, it's kind of having that flexibility too. So every day is like, I've some days where I don't do any work and then other days where I do loads of work and then some days where I do a little bit of work. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's, that's nice. Um, but it's, it's challenging as I said, when you're kind of dipping in and out of it. But, um, yeah, so, so I've been in Trinity, God, I think seven years now. Um, <clears throat> and I am a, um, I teach there in the area of HR and organizational behavior, kind of specializing in well-being in the last couple of years. Um, how I got there, I don't know. I, got there, I kind of fell in there. Uh, I don't know how I kind of snuck in there that, that all those years ago, but um, I did my PhD in DCU in the area of organizational behavior. Um, specialising in, in burnout and work engagement, which was a really hot topic at the time and still still of interest now, but it was kind of really cool back then. And um, then, um, yeah, I got into to Trinity then. Actually, well, I went to work in practice in HR for a little while um, and then a job in Trinity came up and I was obviously really interested in it. So I went for it. Um, didn't think I'd have a hope of getting it, but mm -hmm. got it anyway. Um, I'm sure they're regretting it now, but uh, yeah, I got in there anyway, and it was it was a lovely job to get, and I I was quite young getting a job like that, and it was it was beautiful to have to be in such a place where you could really develop yourself to have so much freedom and opportunity for development, and um you know op options for creativity and stuff like that, and that's how I got into mindfulness as well. I became really interested in that from a personal level, and I asked them would they sponsor me to. Um, become a teacher and trying to be a teacher over two years in that and they were they did and they were very supportive of that so um, I've been very lucky very very lucky in that sense but um, yeah so fantastic and you yeah. you introduced so you mentioned you, you you're interested in the area of workplace well-being and you, you you were the first you introduced modules to your undergrad and master's students last year in the in the area of workplace well-being Mm -hmm. and how, yeah, how, how, did. They, how did they go they have gone very well and um, we were working we are working with our, our student services in trinity and um, because we have you know like any other university massive issues with um mental health for students um well actually not just mental health all areas of health but mental health in particular um and that leads to massive um you know percentages of the student population being registered with disability and you know using counseling services which is good that they're using the services and registering with disability but also worrying that it's growing all the time and that we might be making it worse rather than better as as educators so you know we've and i i still think we have a lot of reflection to do about our role in that as well outside of this module but um we we created a module um, between us that tried to focus very early on in in the students' education on how to look after themselves, um, and it's it's been a bit of a challenge, I have to say. Like we, I think, you know, we thought it would be an easy sell, but um, I think because a lot of students, well, all students were coming in to study business, um, you know, they many struggled to see the relevance of wellness and personal wellness. To business, um, which obviously, like coming being in this area for years, obviously I, I I find surprising. But at the same time, everybody's coming at this from a different place, um, and obviously it you know can depend on what stage of life you're at as well, um, and the challenges of whatever stage of life you're at as well. But um, it's it's really interesting that we've been getting feedback on that, you know, where it, it can be a bit marmite work wellness, not yeah. workplace wellness, just wellness in general, because sometimes people, and this isn't unique to our students, but it just in general, like, you know, some people who, you know, could benefit most from, you know, engaging in education in the area of wellness and they're, you know, thinking about their own, um, stress triggers and how they could look after themselves the people that tend not to want that are the people that might benefit from it the most so that's obviously can be quite difficult so you know and and our programs are compulsory as well which um 
is is difficult as well because you know some people just mightn't be in a good place to go through that reflective process as well so um so it's been it's been a, a steep learning curve for us in terms of what works well and what's not and we definitely don't have a finished product in terms of what's working well and we've been you know looking at other models and what other universities are doing and um but but it, it is going very well yeah but we're still learning about what works well for for different ages different stages you know making that business case so people believe that it's actually worthwhile studying it etc yeah yeah fantastic and that clearly um informed the fact we, we came together then to design mm -hmm. the postgraduate certificate in workplace wellness at tangent trinity's ideas workspace so your your learnings from the, the module from the the compulsory module for the undergrads and the master's students in the in the business school i imagine in, informed an awful lot of your your decisions in in designing the postgraduate certificate yeah yeah they 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 were very linked um but then they they had a lot of overlap but they were quite different in many ways as well because the the postgraduate cert is like a, is a specialized search for people who are working in that area or who yeah. will definitely work in that area whereas the modules were kind of a part of a general business degree so but that was good training actually because that's a harder design almost because you're trying to design something for people that might not be interested in the topic whereas the with the with the tangent program you're um you're speaking to people who've already kind of bought into the yeah. bought into the topic and who who are passionate about it and, and really believe in it. Um, so that's been really interesting, and also um, it's been really interesting for both those approaches for the kind of um, business school modules and the tangent program in terms of how you can balance uh, theory and practice. You know, because obviously with the with the with for with with the, with the modules first for the business students we wanted them we did not want them we're not psychologists and they're not psychologists so we didn't want them to become experts in stress or mental health you know they're not nurses they're not they're not psychologists they're not doctors um nor are we um but we did want them to understand the relevance of how we are in ourselves and our health impacts how well we work and how we study um and then obviously that that carries on into how we work and how businesses run and businesses are basically the product of how well their their staff are um, and you may have a very unhealthy staff but that's not sustainable over time um, and then that was extended out into the program but the program is much more so so sorry with both of them um, there was that balancing of theory and practice but with the with the um, modules there was much more focus on individual practice and how you look after yourself yeah. whereas with the tangent program um which i think you and i had had great fun designing the assignments for that it was really trying to get people to see what it was like to you know pitch a business case and come up with an operating plan and do um all the different really practical things that have to be done to get you know really good uh, wellness programs over the line within an organization because the reality for most people working in that space is that they've bought into it and they know it's necessary and that it'll work but the people that hold the purse strings don't um so that's the difference between those two kind of programs and approaches but um but that's been really fun and i have to say i've been learning a huge amount from from that we just had our um presentations from the first cohort was it last yeah. week wasn't it last week and um where they pitched their business cases and i have to say like because this isn't a very this is a this is um a literature and area that's still massively in its infancy as you well know like this is a very recent thing workplace wellness programs just they didn't even exist a couple of years ago really so um this is new for everybody so like there is no true experts on this really like there aren't there's no academic that's been researching workplace wellness programs for years this academics have been researching you know wellness at work but not programs themselves and how they work so um I think for me, and I, I'm sure it's the same for you, like I'm learning as much from the, the guys in the class as they're learning from us, I think, you know, which has been great. Absolutely. Yeah. And you make a really good point there. They like they have already bought into this, like they've signed up mm -hmm. to this of their own free will. And they're a really engaged and informed and experienced cohort already. 
and they're passionate about this area. So yeah, absolutely, we're, we're learning a lot from them, but it, it's great to see their development through the first module. And as clearly, it, it seems to me, anyway, just chatting with you, we, we definitely took a lot in the early stages um, from those modules in the business school, and certainly the idea anyway, because we focused on the individual well-being, which I don't mm -hmm. see any many other programs doing. So we put mm -hmm. the brakes on, you know, looking at the workplace and developing any kind of solutions for the workplace. It was mm -hmm. a focus on you know, looking after your own health, first of all, and what that is, leading by example, modeling healthy behaviors. And it was only then we kind of introduced the assignments or had a bit of a deeper look at the assignments. And it was that piece you mentioned about developing the business case. How would you go about developing a business case that you could sell to your your senior management team to get their buy-in to support whatever it is that you're doing in the program but yeah learnings all around and uh, great mm. to we went to the presentations there last week and it was um yeah really interesting stuff wasn't it really interesting really really and and even as you were saying there about the reflective piece like i think it's really funny in a way that i think there's a bit of a shock for a lot of now maybe less so with the tangent program but a little bit probably still for people coming to the likes of trinity even whether it's on the you know a business degree masters or the tangent postgrad cert to be assigned an assignment where you're asked basically to reflect on your feelings every week. I, I think for most people, they think that's not an academic activity, but actually in, in, in the times we live in and for this um, topic, it's the most important assignment you could do, do you know? So it's, um, I think that it, it makes, it can unnerve people a bit. It's like they, they, everybody is really interested in kind of getting stuck into research and literature, but actually the hardest thing to do is like, well, how do I actually mind myself? Um, yeah. And it's, it's great to give people a space to do that um, and a forum to do that and to share that with peers as well that they can trust. Um, I think it's, it's a bit of a gift for people to have that space because we don't really get that space very often in life i think where we where someone will say okay i want you to take time and think about how are you feeling right now you know yeah. and how are you looking after yourself it's quite um, novel <laughs> and rare yeah very true very true yeah and speaking of taking time for yourself mm. mentioned the, the mindfulness piece so are you you're kind of doing some give back there you're organizing some sessions for is it some of your colleagues yeah yeah i'm organizing um i'm doing staff and uh student sessions so i i did a student session last week i'm doing a staff session tomorrow and another student session tomorrow and i've offered that out because i'm just lucky with how things have fallen my um, I, my lecturing for the year was was finished and um other people i know have have a huge amount of stress and workload in trying to transfer all their lecturing and their programs online which is really really challenging and um, especially with large numbers and people all over the world and we're trying to do extensions and all these different things and um so i just wanted to i suppose I, i've just been you know um experiencing once we kind of got settled here i kind of felt a bit guilty i have to admit because you know like neither of us we both have our kind of cushy office jobs and you're kind of thinking god like obviously you're doing your best by staying away and not getting sick and not making anyone else sick is the first and most important thing you can do but after that i felt like god you know i really would like to share something and um, if people want it or not and um, so we'll see and um, I offered it out and there had been a pair like people came back and were very very receptive of it and said that they really would love it so um, it's just again like that to give people a space and actually Zoom is brilliant for that and doing you know guided mindfulness pieces where you're allowing people to feel fear you know that's coming up for us um, and and dread and grief and all, all the different range of emotions um, because I think what can happen is when we're trying to you know work from home you know if you're minding your kids or whatever it is you're doing you can kind of push through all the the feelings that are there and try and just block it out so it's really important to have little pockets throughout the day or the week just to have that little bit of time to allow, allow things to be as they are so yeah and the I'm very lucky as well and part of them um, the Mindfulness Teachers Association of Ireland mm -hmm. um, and they have basically 
so that's a professional body of all qualified mindfulness teachers in Ireland and they've set up daily um, daily uh, drop in free groups that you can join at nine o'clock in the morning nine o'clock in the evening so I'm getting involved in that as well to try and help out there and um, just because they'd be put out to the public for free as well particularly for you know frontline workers as well who need supports all that kind of stuff so um, be trying to just do what you can even as small as you can even if it's just things like that you know but um, yeah so so that I, I have to say it's it's um it's a nice resource it's been a nice resource for me to have um for myself for now but also to share with with others which is good that's fantastic yeah we might uh, link to those any public links you have the the mindfulness association of ireland we might link to that mm -hmm. in the show notes yeah definitely it's a great yeah. resource for people well, well done for giving back there um i mean you're so right it's we're all facing like a mix of challenges some of us i you know some people have just been laid off Mm. with nothing to do and some you know never been busier than ever and you kind of feel lucky in the, the course in our program in tangent we we had a 60-40 a split between in person and mm. online so we were already used to the online environment so it was mm. fairly seamless to get us up to that 100% online different but fairly seamless but uh, others certainly don't have it as easy mm -hmm. any any advice for individuals facing these different challenges I and mean, what can they do at this moment in time there's a lot of kind of uncertainty out there any thoughts on what they could do to look after their own well-being yeah um yeah and, and as you said there as well there's people who you know like you're saying about, about me giving back but I, i'm lucky in that like a lot of people are just basically firefighting like you said we were kind of you know kind of used to that online piece as well whereas you know i have colleagues who've never you know taught online and now have yeah. numerous modules with hundreds of students and they're really really under pressure um and then you've other people like you say who who've lost their job or i have students actually that i spoke to last week you know who who were stressed the last time I spoke to them because they had two part-time jobs and weren't able to fit in their study and now they're in isolation on their own with no jobs yeah so and no income so it's like one extreme to the other and they've all the time in the world now for their academic work but they've no company and they've no money so mm -hmm. it's it's really hard so um I have thoughts about how you can look after your well-being in this time but obviously you know um, and I think most of them probably align themselves regardless of circumstances, but um, obviously everybody's kind of in their own place as well and their circumstances. Like I was speaking to friends last night, some of, it was a group of us on Zoom, um, all mindfulness teachers, but some were working for the HSE and were on the front line and other of us were kind of at home, you know, just yep. baking and doing yeah. all these kind of things. So very, very different extremes. So it's just... Um, it's just a lot of people are having very very different experiences at the moment but at the same time i think there's a couple of things that we all need to do and some of it i think and you 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 know this as well brian like that um you know there's a lot of things that we are common sense and it, i almost feel stupid like in in this in the sessions that i've been giving with students saying it because like eat well stay active you know you're like of course but like <laughs> You know, when things like this happen and your routine is taken away from you, like the first week, I remember, you know, uh, turning around to to my other half and being really, really ratty. And, and then I'm like, I actually haven't left this house in two days. I actually, like, what's wrong? So that's what was wrong, you know, and we just kind of had to, to schedule it in and and whatever. So obviously, like being active, you know better than I do, like we have to stay active. Our bodies just need to movement. Um, and we we'll have to like we have two kilometers, which in fairness is is a, is a fine space, you know, if you, like two kilometer radius from your house, yeah. you can do an awful lot with that space. You know, I'm seeing people do very very creative things around our place, and we're using our garden and setting up, you know, salt courses and doing <laughs> dancing, and you know, there's Joe Wicks videos going around oh, yeah. and yoga videos and all of these mad stuff. But like everybody's different in what active means for them. But just obviously. That you need to keep moving your body like my my husband came downstairs there earlier and he was freezing and i was roasting because usually i would be sitting at the at my desk 
um, for the morning, but I was gardening with Molly. So I was roasting and I was moving my body all morning and he was sitting at the laptop. So it's like, I said, you need to kind of, Definitely. you know, just maybe have like a little, a little hourly timer or something to get up and just jump around for a while and, or do some stretching or just go for a little a couple of laps at the garden or whatever it is, obviously. And um, so we're trying to stay active and get out for little nature trails and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But, um, and I have my um, Zoom um, circuit classes, which is hilarious mm. trying to do that in your own house. Um, and it, it, you've no props either. So it's all body weight, which is way harder. But yeah, obviously, so staying active is really important. And I'd mentioned routine as well for people. And there's been um, lots of advice about that, you know, on newspaper articles and different mm. outlets that are giving advice. Um, that it's it's really important for our brains to have routine and some level of predictability. It doesn't mean you have to plan every second of the day, but that you um, you at least you know have some structure on the day. That you know in the morning you get up, you get dressed, you might have a shower, or whatever. And there are a lot of advices to get dressed as if you are going to work. You don't maybe have to get dressed up, but just get dressed yeah. and um, just psychologically prepare for the day you know ahead and you know to you know, take a proper lunch break all that kind of stuff and to schedule in the exercise but that routine is very important it can be flexible and fluid but it needs some kind of a template um and also and within that routine to schedule kind of nourishing activities because if you kind of take the day as it comes sometimes it just you end up just doing housework and work and everything like that and then it's just time for bed and then you end up watching the news that night and yeah. all of a sudden you get sucked in and um, the day is gone and you haven't done anything nice for yourself and whatever that may be for you everybody's different reading or yoga or whatever it may be or go for a walk and yeah. um, the other thing and I, I really like I I've been studying workplace wellness for years and there's been loads of research on this, but I really feel it now how important it is. And that's getting out into nature every single day. And that's, you know, even um, my other half, um, you know, I think somebody senior in his organization came out with an email as well to say, even if you just go into your balcony, if you, like it's not everybody has a garden mm -hmm. or a nice screen next to their house. Everybody has different access to nature, but everybody hopefully has access to some fresh air. Um, and even just to step outside regularly and you know so that your eyes can take in nature and that your your senses can take in nature because our houses are very kind of sterile manufactured environments and that actually has quite a strong impact on our brain and our mood and there's really like there's years of evidence to, to support that which I always knew in my heart and soul but I never really knew how important it was until I'd gone a couple of days here without leaving the house and realized yeah. you know you just need to get out and touch touch things and mm -hmm. just or, or even just to see them and listen to the birds and god the birds are, are singing so loudly at the moment it's amazing yeah. the spring like I mean we're so lucky that it's not November when this is happening as well and we actually can get out and it's quite beautiful and mild today um and it's spring so there's so much to see outside as well if you have any any access to trees or, or nature or whatever it may be um so there's like there's loads of things like the biggest thing well actually in terms of practical things as well obviously like um and everybody probably knows this and it's common sense but it took us about a week to figure this out that um social media um and news exposure has a really strong effect on us and we might not even realize it when it's happening but it'll just kind of leave something with us afterwards so we had to come up with rules in the house um we were both kind of just dipping into it all day and then we'd be sitting down having coffee or, or lunch or whatever and so we'd just see italy and just see spain and oh my god and the uk and boris johnson and lockdown and when we would be in lockdown and how many numbers today how many deaths da, da, da. and we were like gosh like this is, seems to be all we're talking about so um, and we were just checking the news all day so we decided not to check in all day with them um, with the news because at the end of the day like you know the updates are in the evening anyway so there's not much that you're going to miss out really and you can't go anywhere like it matters when we were here two weeks ago and deciding whether to get on the train or not in the morning yeah. um and i was checking like if there was a case in trinity and you know whether i should go to work or not but yeah. now it's like it's purely just for information so um We've been trying to limit that and even like, you know, I, I think everybody's having the same experience as well of WhatsApp groups just going mental and they're really great. Um, and that's also part of 
minding yourself is to keep that connectivity but i think if you're kind of allowing it to just come at you all day long without any control over it and um, because some groups are sending you know just loads of jokes and really funny stuff and some groups are sending on you know things about you know serious things that are all very useful and true but at that moment in time it might not be helpful to you to learn about you know the number of deaths in italy that day or something like that so um we've been trying to, to monitor and, and and also come up with a bit of a curfew like we've come up with like we already had a bit of a no phones in in the bedroom kind of a thing but we've been really strict about it now because you don't want that kind of news coming to you before you're about to go to sleep because it affects your sleep obviously and um obviously and then trustworthy sources as well as obviously really important as well that you just maybe have your or not well that's what we're doing is that you just have your check-in with your the, the the source that you trust whether it be rt or bbc or whether you want kind of a an irish view worldwide view but we've we and we've had to play around with that like i don't think there's any hard and fast rule but i think there's lots of advice out there to really be careful with social media and news because it, it affects us in more ways than we know and we're having kind of physical or physiological aversions to it and um, but we're not making the connection that by sitting down watching the news um you know maybe f and different things and looking at our phone for over an hour um, which is all bad news um, that we have this kind of churning in our stomach or yeah. whatever it is because um, that impacts our behavior as well but uh, I suppose the biggest thing for me that I think is the most important thing for looking after ourselves during this time for anybody whether they're unemployed working from home minding their kids on their own is to really give space to feel what you're feeling and that sounds really kind of cheesy probably and you know touchy-feely but um, this is obviously a really a time of really immense intense emotions um, and I've, I've found it really interesting over the last couple of weeks thinking about um, fear because there's a lot of talk about fear at the moment and there was a lot of talk about um, you know all the panic buying and all that kind of stuff and you know fear being talked about as you know like it's a virus in itself and it's contagious and all these different things but it's really interesting because fear is very natural and it's very appropriate and it's very intelligent and when we feel fearful about something it's it's usually right um you know that we're sent and and in this situation uh, we have a lot to be afraid of do you know and um, there's a lot of unknowns there's actual you know danger to our lives our health the health of our loved ones you know it's real it's not imagined and mm -hmm. uh, we're not overplaying it mostly in our heads now we might be catastrophizing at home as well like if you have a cough or a headache or something like that you might think oh my god but um but but this is real and um, but at the same time so that that fear is really real it's really um appropriate and it's intelligent and it's our body actually responding to what's here um and but it, it can be really harmful and it can cause us a lot of suffering if we don't um, recognize it when it's there um, and allow it to be there a little just for a, a time. Um, and I think that's what a lot of people are struggling with that I've seen and that I've heard of and, um, is that they're pushing through the fear. And I think a lot of people, you know, we were having a really interesting discussion with my peers yesterday about there's people in particular positions on the front line that just don't that need to just keep pushing on at the moment because you know they're they're really at the front line and they're dealing with really really heavy stuff day to day but for those of us who have the space and time to take time during the day to you know just ask yourself how am i feeling right now you know am i feeling scared am i feeling angry for me there's kind of this fluctuation between you know sometimes i'm happy and this is like this really nice life that I've always wanted. And then there's guilt because I'm not, you know, working in the HSC or doing all the hard shifts that all, all the others are doing. And there's kind of anger of others if they're like walking too close. I had a few walks out as well where I came home full of anger um, or, or shopping trips, um, which is very unlike me. And I just noticed as well, really strong emotions there. And I just said, look, I'm just feeling really angry at people right now. And that's, just that's okay just allow that to be here so everybody's different in how they give themselves space to feel what they're feeling and um, for me obviously it's mindfulness and 
I do practice to kind of ask, you know, what's here for me right now, whether it's in my body, my mind, uh, but what's here. But for others, it can be just as simple as, as journaling or writing it down, you know, just taking a little bit of time yeah. at the end of the day or in the middle of the day um, to, to sit down and say, okay, how am I feeling right now? And write it down. And it doesn't have to make any sense. You know, you just, you're just asking yourself that question. And there'd be times as well, depending on your situation where you might, um, be completely overwhelmed and there's like there's um a term by um a psychologist called um dan siegel called the window of tolerance so we might be in a state we're actually outside that window of tolerance where even acknowledging the feelings is too hard so we actually need to calm down our central nervous system so we might be really panicking like if somebody has lost their job or they might be about to lose their job or or, you know anything they or if they're in a you know a very confined space with with their family and they're not getting on there, there's a lot of feelings of panic so sometimes we have to do things to actually calm down our central nervous system which can be things like you know exercise just moving the body and um doing some deep breathing actual physiological things to calm that down and then say okay what's here for me right now and can i allow that to be here and practice mindfulness but for it, it really depends on our situation as well and where we're at and whether we might be you know experience a lot of times where we are outside that window of tolerance um and panic and fear is setting in and it's kind of overwhelming us so we need to kind of come back to what's here right now and kind of ground ourselves but that that can be really tricky and i know what i'm saying obviously is much much easier said than done and i am you know trying it myself every day and some days are better than others so i'm definitely not an expert at it either well, yeah so, that sorry was, that was really a bit of a long-winded answer <laughs> yeah well and thank you for that because there's some really excellent advice in there and there's there's something in there for absolutely everyone no matter what the challenge they're facing i particularly liked the this the line you had about scheduling nourishing activities into mm -hmm. our day be that physical activity gardening getting out in nature eating well good nourishing food so important isn't it even to just thinking about it in that way nourishing activities and scheduling it otherwise mm -hmm. our day will probably be taken over by just reacting yeah emails or to work or to household chores yeah so yeah it, really important i like that one scheduling those nourishing activities yeah into our day um so amazing advice there for the individuals how about any thoughts on the employers so the employ a lot of employers are being hit really hard at the moment as well any thoughts on how, how can they how can they support their employees a lot of them now will be working remotely for the first time and then their workplaces if we can you know look into the future a month or two or maybe more they'll be hopefully welcoming people back into the the workplace any thoughts how they can prepare for the, how, how they can support employees now and maybe how they can prepare for everyone coming back into the workplace? Mm. Yeah, um, it's, it's a tricky one, isn't it? Because employers themselves, like, I think this is such an interesting time because even, you know, the CEOs of our companies, you know, are at home, you know, a lot of them with their kids climbing over their shoulder. Yeah. You know, like every, this is like level playing field for everybody. So everybody is, nobody has some kind of convenient, convenient number where you can outsource your your domestic duties or your kids or anything like that. So it's funny. It's funny in that sense. Yeah. So like even employers, like it's, the, the people I, I feel I feel really for management at this time because they have so they're dealing with and I can see this you know at my own workplace like they have the anxiety of all their um their colleagues and the people that work for them and they're in their teams and their adjustment to it they have their own um, and their family and their situation and then they have you know also are responsible for if the, if you have clients or customers or students in our cases um and all their you know you know you know their adaptions and anxieties as well so it's really tricky but you know obviously i think one of the the most important thing that you know and i and i i've seen great evidence of this i have to say for anyone i've spoken to and in my own experience of just really trusting people um you know just really trusting people that they're doing their best um and 
what I've seen recently, actually, in the last week, both myself and my other half were talking about this earlier, that both our bosses, um, so he had a call with his boss earlier and um, his kids were with him, his boss, and um, my boss, my, in our, in our um, school, we had a really nice idea. It was like, um, it's called a casual cafe or something. It was yeah. yesterday. Um, and everybody was invited, but it was it said that all family members were welcome, dogs, kids, <laughs> whatever, you know, we're all welcome. And, and the, our, our leaders, both our, our bosses also had their family members in the camera and it was madness as well. And that was kind of encouraged. So yeah. I think that kind of put every, like him and me at ease as well, that that's okay. Because I think it's very, very stressful for people who were trying to find a quiet corner of their house where they're not going to be disturbed. And obviously, like, this doesn't even just apply to, to people with kids. Um, but it's just that your whole, you're at home and it's your personal life, you know, and all the things that come with it, whether you're even on your own or you have your kids there. But I think it's really um, nice for people to see that their, their colleagues and their leaders are human beings, their managers, mm -hmm. that have personal lives as well. And actually, I think... I think that's actually a silver lining to, to this whole thing. Um, and I think there's actually a lot of silver linings to it. And I, obviously I wish this hadn't happened, but if we were to look for silver linings, that is definitely one in terms of workplaces is that it's really brought out the kind of human in us that, you know, I think for so many years, you know, I've been working in a business school where, you know, a lot of the, the narrative is that you know you know our professional selves and putting our professional selves forward and in recent years I've become much more of an advocate of um just from different learnings um that we, we we're much better off if we can bring our whole selves to work and just be ourselves it doesn't mean you go in and you talk with your family all day or your personal life or your issues but that just that you don't have to pretend to be somebody else and I think it's really cool um for people at this time and employers to encourage people obviously like you still have to have meetings and make some bit of an effort to to get things done and yeah. you know um and have meetings maybe where the kids aren't there all the time mm -hmm. but i think that human element is really really cool and it's really nice and i think if it's modeled from those obviously no one will do it if if the leader doesn't do it i think and if they can show that it's okay and it's normal to have a bit of life going on in the background um in that quiet corner of the house or some because some people are working off their kitchen table mm -hmm. um or their bedroom or whatever um that that's okay and i think that that really puts people at ease to see that to demonstrate yeah. and i think that's really good the other thing i think that's really tricky for people i i'm probably more used to this because my work like this hasn't been you know the most massive transition for me because I have a very flexible autonomous job anyway and I would work a lot from home anyway and um, but for other people they may never have worked from home and yeah. um, would have gone into an office every day and you'd be having cups of tea with people and you'd be having your lunch with people um, and you'd be having lots of chats throughout the day and if you were to add up all those chats it's so much interaction with people and all of a sudden it can be really lonely to be at home and you're, you know it's great that technology is allowing us to work all remotely but um, if we don't use it for kind of just chatting as well, you know, it can be very, very lonely if we just do our work stuff because you're losing out on all those coffees and little yeah. lunch breaks and everything like that and all those kind of casual conversations. So I think um, it's really, and I've heard again, great stories and we had a great thing yesterday with that casual cafe. I think it's really important for employers to set up, you know, virtual get togethers with staff that aren't about um, work. And I thought it was really cool. Um, that our boss sent um, the email inviting people and he said there was no work talk allowed and that you'd be nearly kicked out of the meeting if you mm. talked about work, do you know? So kids were welcome, fam or whatever, you just come with your cup of coffee or whatever and uh, no work talk and just to chat, which I think um, we have to make sure that we keep getting in because we, we, you'd be surprised how much of that throughout the day that we, we're missing out on. Um, and then you need, they need to make sure that people have um, people that they can talk to, especially like we have colleagues, um, some of whom, you know, are at home and they have to juggle um, their kids and their work and all that. And then you've other, I've other colleagues who have moved here from another country. They're not near their family yeah. um, and they're, you know, they're in a rented accommodation or, you know, or, and I have students as well are in the same and they're all on their own as well. Um, so it's so important to have, you know, check-ins with people 
that you can be a bit vulnerable with as well and employers might need to help people as well to do that that you can come up with buddy systems or you know small group you can have you know once a week a chat or whatever it is um, and every every employer is different you know and, and manager is different as well yeah. but i've seen really cool things with zoom and coffees and zoom and all that kind of yeah, stuff yeah but well. that, that's great I, I i've seen a few of them as well but i hadn't seen the the open invite to family and pets that's yeah. a really nice one isn't it and as you say it, gives, it brings the human element to it yeah. and it just shows you as you as you started out by saying like this this crisis is it's actually a great leveler yeah it's very it's affecting yeah. all of us in the very same way we're pretty yeah. much all at home having to work with whatever the conditions we have at home are and yeah. like that. so that sounds like that casual cafe sounds like a real real positive yeah it's it, it's really good for people to see that their colleagues are, are human beings and their managers are human beings as well like you know because emailing is so impersonal as well and it's great to be able to see people's faces as well you know yeah it's really good yeah and and oh, and the last thing that i was thinking as well was um with with employers is i think there needs to be an honest conversation about workload as well i think a lot of people at home trying to um again it depends on your circumstances but if you're working if you're if you're fortunate enough to still have a job um and you're at home working it's very hard to go to your boss and say i can't cope with how much i've on so i think it has to come you know from the employer and that's a hard thing as well you know that's usually left to the annual appraisal or whatever yeah. but this is a this is this is just blowing everything up and people are at home and some people like i've heard really interesting stories about couples you know trying to work in shifts where some are working in the morning some in the afternoon some are working you know different days and some are just working at night time basically and all different situations but realistically like if you have conflicting demands and some people are also volunteering as well you know outside the home there's loads of different things mm -hmm. going on and some people have elderly parents all like so everybody has different things going on but um there's certain things that can wait and obviously i know every employer you know we all have very important projects and things like that but i've also had very interesting conversations over the last week or two you know, reflecting about what they're spending their days doing and how urgent or important, really questioning the urgency and importance of some of the tasks that they're involved in. Um, and if it really does need to be done or we need to, or whether things can be pushed down a little bit um, so that this isn't this horrendous time where people are going to burn out very, very quickly. Because like, I think we have to be honest with ourselves, like even if we're now, uh, you know, we're now at the end of March, you know, like we could be another month or two in this situation. Um, even if it peaks in two weeks, it still has to kind of, we have to get it where it's nearly gone before things go back to, well, I, I don't want things to completely go back to the way they were, but in terms of the health of our population, I do. Um, but um, yeah, so I think, I think it's important that where possible if it can be done depending on the service obviously that you're in or the, the the business that you're in if it's possible to have conversations with people look you know how are you in terms of the priorities of your tasks you know have you are you able to cope with everything that you've got on do we need to delegate anything or is there anything that we could delay in terms of a project that needs to be done um, because this is going to bring for most companies as well I, I haven't spoken to anybody that this isn't going to affect their work as well you know in the future so this is bringing new projects if you want to call it that um, as well so this is going to bring new workload as well so you know we have to be very very flexible as well about um workload priorities deadlines all that kind of stuff and I, i've only seen very good examples of that but i think sometimes we can forget and it's very hard for people to again to approach their manager and say look i'm really struggling or to say you know i'm minding my kids during the day and yeah. i'm staying up all night and i'm actually getting quite sick myself from doing that and it's not really working for me um you know can we talk about because it? it's seen as a bit of a weakness you know so yeah. You know, I think that that being initiated by employers will be really helpful. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Yeah. So that open communication and ideally initiated 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 by employers, if possible. Mm -hmm. And you you spoke um, about you, you're passionate about the future of work. 
you came mm. into the to the students on in tangent and the PG cert uh, in workplace wellness, and you actually gave a session on that on the future of work. And this was before anything like this, uh, before we were all working from home. Yeah. Does this change that conversation in any way? Does this bring it forward? I mean, certainly remote working was it was an element of, of what you discussed mm. in that session, but only back in February of <laughs> last month or yeah. a over a month ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like it, it's something obviously I'm very personally passionate about is where where we're going in the future, particularly um, with regard to um, with cl climate change, but also kind of the um, sustainability of, of lifestyle and the way we live in our society and our economy. Um, and obviously, I'm, I'm, it's interesting that I work in a business school, obviously, and I obviously am an advocate of us slowing down, you know, how we do things. And so this, for me, is the most interesting experiment, social experiment yes. that we've ever had um, in, in, in our lifetime, um, where we're forced to stop. And obviously, um, my work, I, 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 don't get me wrong, obviously, I, I really don't wish this had happened, and yeah. I don't wish it was happening. Um, but at the same time, we have to look at it as an opportunity as well to reset ourselves. And my work for years has, since I became interested in, in mindfulness, was trying to, myself personally, because I, and I keep slipping back in, was to just slow down and just doing, 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 doing more, 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 um, and just getting busier and busier and busier and busier. Um, and trying to kind of simplify and slow down life a little bit. And this has been such an interesting experiment because obviously that's been taken out of our hands. We're not able to go to the shops. We're not able to travel. We're not able to do loads of things. We're not able to really consume very much. So this is a really, really interesting time. And there's so much discussion and um, things going around on social media about um, how this is an amazing reflection for the world in terms of slowing down. And I have to say, like, it, it gives me sometimes it, it makes me very hopeful about the future that we have realized that we do need to slow down in many ways and, and that it's lovely to actually live mm -hmm. somewhat of a simpler life obviously not in this very very restrictive way but just at a slower pace um, and that there's so much even you know near to us that we can avail of even in terms of nature and resources yeah. that we have even on our doorstep but um I, I am fearful that when there's a lot of talk about when things go back to normal and I, I remember having a chat yesterday with 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 peers and we were saying like in many ways we don't really want things to go back to normal because when I was saying about talking about that with the future of work um, I was saying that I, I really do believe that we need to in the future for many reasons we all need to work much less than we are right now. Um, I think the full-time working week is is very much um, based on kind of the industrial area and we're all still kind of, you know, the trains, before this happened, the trains were packed, you know, Irish Rail was a crisis point where they were asking people not to wear backpacks and to dagger their commutes you know it was just mental the m1 was ma mental every morning you know it was just absolutely mad and everybody was going to work every day which is a great sign because it means you know we have full employment yeah. but at the same time you know everything was just a kind of capacity and breaking point as well so obviously i was making the pitch in that session that i would love to see us working less and working more flexibly for the future for many reasons for um in terms of carbon emissions but also in terms of our own um our own health and our own balance and our own lives of just constantly running around the place and running from one place to the next um and like for me personally i i really felt uh, not that I don't, I, I like going in and having a bit of a space to meet colleagues and stuff like that, but I have found commuting less has already had a very um, positive impact on my health in the last three weeks um, in terms of my own, my own body and health. Um, but yeah, so I think it's a really interesting time for us as individuals and employers to reflect on how we want things to be when we, when this is over, like obviously, it'll be a long time before it's over. Like it was essentially until we have a vaccine, it's never, it's not going to be mm -hmm. over. But um, how, like even in 12 months time, how do we want our, our businesses to look? Um, 
because this is also a time for us to to reflect and be creative as well because we have that space um to, well some of us have that space to to reflect about um how we want the next stage and the next phase of our personal lives but also our professional lives to be and i think there's going to be a lot of reflections for individuals about what they want their careers to look like after this as well um, and the balance of work and home um, but also for employers and i think employers also should predict that people are going to be maybe a bit more cognizant when they return after this about that balance in their lives because they'll have had a taste Okay. of having more time for their home life and they might want to maintain some of that or keep on to some of that and if they're expected to come straight back and go back to the five-day office week perhaps or whatever it is and some people might like that don't get me wrong but if they have no choice and um, they might well not be happy with that now obviously we, we we're likely to be in an, in an economic scenario where you know they're you know employment opportunities won't be obviously everywhere and and things will be difficult but at the same time i think employers should almost embrace this opportunity to explore you know how can we work differently when we go back um and you know are people working well you know like when you trust people to work mm. in a way that they want to work um if they wish to do so you know people are still being very productive um and creative etc so um you know how can we maintain that and to kind of put that out to people as well and to say you know how would you like to proceed it doesn't mean you have to take every suggestion on board and everybody can work fully from home etc and um, because obviously you have business needs but just that you have that open conversation so it's not because i think things will never be the same again after this like you know it's just it's it's too big um and i think employers need to be prepared for that because i think if they think things are going to go back to the way they were they're they're going to get hit from a lot of different angles and from their employees as well who who are going to be unhappy with that that shift and rigidity after it all so yeah yeah <laughs> so it's no it's a big experiment i think yeah really interesting points there and something as you say that employers should certainly be considering when, when things do maybe settle down a little bit for them uh something to consider when when this does go back to some kind of normality but we we had seen before and we spoke before about kind of results only work environments and that had been kind of starting and growing uh even before this commenced i think this will probably speed that up a little bit I don't think employers are going to be necessarily don't need to be a bum on a seat from nine to five Monday Monday through Friday it's more about productivity as you said and mm -hmm. what, what a fantastic experiment a social experiment here they are almost everybody working remotely now potentially being as productive as possible if not more we'll, we'll find out soon I'm sure there'll be some interesting studies and data once this is all over but yeah, as you said, some a lot of silver linings. Again, we don't, we wish this hadn't happened, but there's going to be a lot of positives that come out of this. And I think that, that's a nice way to finish up. And something you mentioned earlier, which just got me thinking, and it made so much sense, I realized that I had noticed this, was the fact I can hear the birds. Every day yeah. I go for my, my one walk a day or my, my piece of exercise in the local park, they're, they're just they're just louder than i've ever heard them before and i know it's spring but there's more to it than that it's is it mm. the less cars on the road is it less people i'm just you're really hearing the birds singing and that's just one of the the many many positives that are out there yeah Listen, sarah jane you've been really generous with your time thanks so much for anyone listening to this that would like to get in touch with you or would there be any are you on social media or what's the best way they could they could reach out uh, yeah they can get me on linkedin or um drop me a line on sarah jane uh, dot cullinan at tcd.ie or look at my website as well um www.theplacetobe.ie for the place to be.ie yeah that's it fantastic well listen sarah jane thanks again for your time stay safe i'll chat with you again soon you too brian take care